Hello and welcome to the Long Island Railroad Montauk Branch. In this episode I'm going to show you how I weather cars because I was asked to describe the process and since I have a car here that needs weathering I thought I'd show you. The first step is to create a color that's close to but a little bit lighter than the color of the car you're weathering. And to do that I'm going to use uh, Tamiya uh, Hull Red and Tamiya Flat Earth. And that reminds me of a joke. How do we know the earth isn't flat? Uh, answer is because if it were, cats would have knocked everything off the edge by now. Now the secret to this process is to add a little bit of Tamiya X21 flat base, which makes it, well, you'll see. So you can see there in the bowl for the airbrush, the color I came up with. Now it could probably be, in fact it should be, a little bit lighter. But, you know, live and learn. Now the paint should be obviously very thin. The paint to flat base ratio is about 2 to 1 and then about 10 to 1 for IPA to paint. It, always make it thin because you can always spray more paint on, you can never take it off. So make it very thin and if you need more just spray more on. So the first step is obviously spray on this uh, dull coat for lack of a better term uh, that I've come up with. And here's what it looks like when we're done. The effect we're going for is just a slightly faded look or a lot faded look and that will depend on how much lighter you make the color than the original color. The next step is to seal the base coat. Uh, this is what I use. Uh, there's plenty of other options. Use whatever you feel like using. The next step is to uh, uh, use the wet on wet technique and uh, I'm going to use this to add a, a grime coat with some dark brown and black mixed together. This will add shadows and some relief. You could also use this technique to add a light coat to add highlights and dirt marks. And You just have to experiment with this and decide how you want to use it. It can be used any number of ways. Uh, the secret is make sure you dry each coat thoroughly or allow each coat to dry thoroughly before you put on the next coat. Here's something you can do for a really neat effect. Uh, isopropyl alcohol will react with the matte coat that I added to uh, make something that looks pretty cool if that's what you want. So, but if it's not what you want, <coughs> don't do this. So I'm just going to paint on a little 70% IPA and then uh, hit it with a hair dryer and watch what happens. It's pretty neat. And the next thing I'd like to do is to put on uh, a bunch of uh, weathering powders. These are Tamiya weathering powders, which I really like. Going to put a little mud on the bottom, uh, a little lighter sand at the top to kind of highlight it, and then uh, some orange rust on things that might rust because uh, the normal rust color is pretty much the exact same color as the car itself, so it wouldn't show up. Are you going to help? You're kind of in the way. Please stop rubbing on the camera. All right, thank you. 
Now we're going to add rust with uh, normal everyday craft paint applied with a sponge and uh, put it on in layers. We're going to start with a layer of burnt sienna and we're going to follow that up with a layer of burnt umber. We're just going to dab it on somewhat randomly uh, in places that would normally rust and here's the point where you really should be using a prototype like a picture of the car that you're working with to see how it rusts in reality but I don't have that so I'm just kind of going for it. Now I'm going to add a little of the burnt umber everywhere I added the burnt sienna so it builds up in layers the sienna uh, on the bottom and then the darker burnt umber on the top. Now we're going to add some rust streaks by using oil-based burnt umber. It absolutely has to be oil-based. Dabbing it on uh, in spots where the rust is likely to streak and then letting it dry for several hours and then taking some thinner and using the brush uh, streaking it down the side of the car. And the next and final step is to take a standard number two pencil or a drawing pencil like this one and highlight places that uh, are likely to have metal showing that get a lot of, of use. So the slides on the, uh, the door here, the uh, handles and latches on the door machinery, uh, rungs on the ladders, uh, the, hand, you know, the brake wheel, where you put your hands and the railings up on top of the, the walkways, places like that. And here it is complete, the most overweathered car ever. This is just one way to do it. In fact, I may not even do it this way all the time. I may change it up and do different things. I'm kind of weird that way. So this is a way to do it. There's plenty of other ways, uh, but I hope you learned something from this, and I'll see you next time on the Long Island Railroad Montauk Branch.